Hey folks, have you ever wondered what it takes to tune a mixture? No? Well, if you watch this video, you're going to find out anyway, so you can just stop viewing now. I'm up here in the top level of the swell. I'm on level five here with our old friend, the eight, eight rank Symbol. Yes, I wanted to start out this video with the furniture that's in the back of the chest, but the lighting is so bad back there, it wouldn't have been good for video. So I'm up here in front. Now, I'm going to go through the, the basic steps of, of mixture tuning, and it's a little bit different on this organ than it is on some, but uh, for the purposes of this video, we're going to do it the standard way. Now, this is an eight rank mixture. When you press one key, you get eight sets of pipes, right? But as you can see, it's on groups of toe boards. One, two, three, four. It's on five different toe boards. Now, generally, what you do in a, in a situation like this and the way that I've tuned this thing is that you go underneath the chest and you put tape over the magnets for the stop actions because this is a stop action, this toe board is a stop action, this toe board is a stop action. It's five stop actions for the eight ranks, right? And that way you can just tune smaller groups at a time and then add them up. But climbing underneath this chest, reaching up there and taping off the magnets every time I want to change something just isn't practical for video purposes. So I'm just going to do it as if it's all on a common channel. Speaking of which, generally, most of the time in most organs, when you play a note, you get two, three, four, five, however many notes. All the pipes are standing on a common channel. There's one hole drilled sideways to connect X number of pipes. So sometimes the channels can be really long if the mixture is deep or if it's just two ranks like this, then the channel would just be this long. But when you have big chests like this uh, with the separate toe boards, this, this toe board is channeled, so these two are on a common windway. These two are channeled, these two are channeled, and so on. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to pretend that they're all on one channel because I don't want to go switching stuff around. So the first thing you ought to do is to make them shut up. Already succeeded. Just kidding, they're not playing. No, what you have to do is you have to mute them. And so I brought up from my home some mixture mutes. And, and the, yes, the, these are tools of the trade. These are pipe cleaners from a craft store or Walmart or wherever you can get them. You can use pipe cleaners, you can use, um, in the olden days, supposedly they used feathers to make the pipes quiet. So what you do is you go through and you literally just put them down in the pipe and you have to use something that's effective enough to get down in there and completely disrupt the airflow through the pipe so that it doesn't make any sound. Now, you have to use different size mutes for different size pipes and different pipe constructions and things. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do that first. But before I do that, I will reach up here. I have the iPad with me. And I'm going to play one note. I'm going to take this out. And yeah, it's pretty loud. I think this is on 10. So I'm using this wireless mic here. I don't know what's going to happen with the sound of that, but here's, here it is. And so on. So I have to take all these, except for the bottom rank, and make them go quiet because it's not practical to listen to eight, in this case, eight pipes at once and try to tune each one in between. So you go from bottom to top in order of pitch most of the time, not always, but most of the time, and you just work your way up, take the mutes out, and keep going. So I'm going to pause here and do that, and then we'll come back. All right. I've muted all these pipes. Now, this is on, I think I said 10 inches of wind. I think that's right. Close enough for government work. Anyway, so you see that there are all these things sticking out of the pipe out of all these pipes. You have to get them down in there and then sometimes the mute isn't big enough to just put down in there. You have to rest it against the mouth of the pipe to get it to completely go quiet, as, as, mar as quiet as you can possibly get it. There's usually a little bit of bleed through, even on the pipes that you have muted. 
and there's nothing that can be done about that usually. And for tuning purposes, that's okay. We can, we can do without it. And we can make do with the noise. So then the other thing you have to figure out is, what are you tuning it to? What's your reference? Well, in this case, we use the string rank on the next level down, uh, voice number 137, gambet which is a string rank. You might think, well, why aren't you using a principle? Well, it depends on the scale of the pipes you're tuning, how you can hear it. That's a big part of it because the diapason, I believe, the, the principal choruses in the swell in this organ are down a couple more levels. I'm up here on the fifth level. I can't hear it very well. I have to have something that's physically close so that I can hear it in reference to this. So we're using the gambet down immediately beneath the walkboard here where I am so you can hear it clearly. So I'm going to turn on the mixture and you'll, well, first, I'm on the C sharp side of the chest here. So let's turn on. One. Okay, so there's the note I'm tuning to. That's the gambet downstairs. Okay. Now here's the mixture with everything muted off. Oops, that was C. C, one note. So now if I put that on with the tuning stop, we hear. You're hearing that fifth. I, I don't know how, again, I can't tell what's coming out on video, but hopefully you can hear that. So I'm going to go ahead and tune this. This low C sharp, because it's good for video and it's, it's easy to hear everything here, relatively speaking. I'm just going to put it on sostenuto so that it's holding it down. And I'm going to go through each note and I'm going to unmute one at a time and just work my way up, work my way up. And as you go through, if you're doing this, and I, I'll do this for the video, you take the mute and you put it in the next note, take the mute, put it in the next note, and so on and so on like that. So here we go. Oops. That's it. Now, I don't know about you, but I couldn't hear that ninth when I took the mutes out. I just couldn't hear it. It's too quiet. It didn't seem to disrupt anything, but I'm, oops. I guess one of my mutes just went downstairs. Anyway, I'm going to mute these back up and I'm going to listen to this one. And I'm curious and probably the uh, organ techs out there in the audience will probably be interested to hear what the ninth is like by itself. So uh, give me a second. Okay, so I know some of the organ folks out there in the audience are saying, hey, what about those, those weird harmonics that I like so much? I know I like so much. Could hardly hear them. So I've muted this back up completely, including rank number one. And I will go through with the tuning stop and do the uh, third, the seventh, and the ninth separately so you can hear them and then the three together by themselves. 
chút à. And there you have it. There's there's the the eight ranks of ball. Now, this one gets kind of complicated, especially because of the the way the toe boards are arranged. When I'm doing it the, the regular way, there are times that up in the upper reaches of this set, I can't hear it with what's going on downstairs, even under perfect conditions. So I have to tune each rank in octaves to itself on a toe board that has two ranks connected. So you have to mute a total of four pipes and hopscotch your way along moving two mutes at a time every time and that takes a long time. The first time this mixture was tuned James Martin was holding keys or holding the iPad and I was up here and it took four hours the first time. It doesn't take that long now because we've got the experience to do it faster but you can imagine working on this from eight o'clock till noon. Yeah I was, I was ready for lunch. So I'm going to wrap it up up here. That's the basics but there's a, a compound stop in this organ that really gives an organ tuner a run for his money. All right, so I've moved chambers. I'm over here in the solo now. See, my mic is up there. And um, remember our old friend, the four rank uh, Carillon. This is where all the mixture tuning experience in the world won't help you in a lot of ways because uh, talk about a curveball, you know, things that always seem so ordinary in any other organ here just you can't do it it's just not gonna work so first off uh, the camera can't get any wider a shot so this is this is it so we have a harmonic flute here which I'll take out I'm not wearing gloves but it, it's okay for this temporarily look how long this pipe is I would have to have a little a tuning mute to come down to the, remember this is on 30 inches of wind right so I would have to have a mute that came you know two feet down into the pipe to mute it from the top. That's not going to happen. Okay, so as you can see, I had to take pipe cleaners and kind of double them up and put them directly into the mouths. There's no other way to get them to mute correctly. It just won't work. Now the other thing is that this, this stop here is extremely loud and dealing on 30 inches of wind pressure, it doesn't behave the way a lot of other sets like this do. You have to keep in mind, I'm here on the very end of the chest. It's wide open. It's no big deal to do this. In toward the center of the chest, there's no room to put a pipe cleaner down in the pipe like this to get it to be quiet. You have to make special something, whatever. I think I used pieces of paper on um, sticks to reach down in there and get into because the mouths get smaller and smaller and it's harder and harder to get something in there so it can be quite a challenge. The other thing is that look what happens when I take one of the pipe cleaners out and try to put it back in. It's going to be loud.
the wind is so strong, it keeps trying to blow the pipe cleaner away. And things will shift around because of the high pressure and go crazy. So anyway, it's all muted up now. Oh, here's another thing. From back to front, which one do you think is the lowest pitch? You'd be right, it's this one. What's the highest pitch? The front one? No, it's this one. It's the stopped pipe that's blowing a harmonic note, and it's actually the highest pitch. So you don't do that one uh, in order. You have to skip around. So anyway, what do I use to tune this? No flue work around here. I can't hear it because this is so loud. I actually have to use the double trumpet in back. I forget what the name of it is, the exact name, but it's, it's a trumpet on 30 inches of wind. It's voice number 74, and it's the only thing I can hear that will keep up with this. So I'm going to turn it on. This is probably already in tune, so it's not going to take much, but I'll show you what it sounds like. So here's number 74. Imagine doing that, what, 68 times? <laughs> As the pitch goes higher and higher, it's harder and harder to hear. And you can see just, <laughs> I couldn't get the cap to move, so I had to move it by hand and then tap it back down with a tuning knife. But anyway, th there you have it. I mean, as of right now, with what's playing in the organ, this is the most challenging compound ring to tune, in my opinion. But as the ceiling chambers get done, I think the fanfare has a harmonic mixture with lots of uh, off unison pitches, more so, more so or as much as the uh, cymbal in the, in the swell. So for now, that's Mixture Tuning 101. I hope you enjoyed it.